Hey there everyone, Atesh here, back again with another video and welcome to the series on React Native. So in the last video, you have seen what we are about to build. This is something of an interesting project and is going to require a little bit study, research and patience on your side as well. We're going to be dealing with music and when you deal with the music or some video, it's not easy. You definitely are dependent on some third party applications, especially in the scenarios of like React Native, Flutter or similar uh, kind of a projects. Not only that, we have to learn a little bit about how things are done in the phone. The phone is a very sensitive device. It's not as robust as you see on your desktop because you don't have to worry too much about the memory. Yes, there is a memory issue in the desktop as well, but on the phone, it's a very sensitive issue. Now, when you work on something like player, like a music player, there's a lot that happens in the background, especially when the music is being played and sometimes when the music is coming from the server. There can be a whole lot of like entire career just on managing how the videos and audios work on mobile devices. I'll give you a brief introduction and overview of that. So that's why this video is going to be very interesting. And I'll teach you in such a way that it's going to be a longer journey for you. So further on, let's just say you want to work on core Android, core iOS or Flutter. You know the core principles of it and you can implement such functionality in anywhere you go or any package that you use. So that's exactly what we'll be studying. If you haven't watched the previous video, watch the previous one. It will showcase you that what we are about to build. I'll give you all the assets and everything. So don't you worry on that part. OK, so I've set up a new project. So this is pretty easy. You have already done that many times now, so I won't be showing you that. It's pretty easy. Uh, you know that NPX React Native in it and the project name, super simple command. I have been doing that for so many long, so not going to be talking about that. OK, let's go ahead and talk about what we will be using. This is React Native Track Player. This is really one of the most famous library that is used in the React Native for playing the music. It has so much of the amazingness. There are other packages as well, but this one is amazing. It is Lightwell Fields Native. That is absolutely 100% true about it. What's more impressive about it, it actually deals with the local or network files. It also deals with the Dash and HLS. Now, if you'll study a little bit more about these tech, these are something uh, really interesting and latest state of the art techs in which your entire music doesn't come in just one file. It is being splitted into chunks and sometimes even these chunks are encrypted. So there's a lot that this library handles for you. It also handles the background, playback, control, caching and all of that. So you don't have to manually worry about that. It support Android, iOS and Windows. What more we can ask for it? Now, there is a lot of interesting features that we can work on with that. Now, playing music is not like, hey, I created a music, I installed this library and I said, hey, play this music. No, there's a lot of events. You need to create an entire separate service for it so that you can actually first set up a player, can put music on that player. And once the player is ready, because this is not an instant process, the memory is being set up, the player is being set up, then a track is being loaded on that or many tracks are being loaded on that. Then we have to worry about, is this now OK or should I wait more? Once this is OK, Am I listening to all the events like move forward or move backward or the player controls? There's so much of activities and event that goes around. So a couple of things that you should always ask yourself, is my player ready? Because just because your player, your app has initiated doesn't mean that your player is also going to be ready at the same time. It definitely is going to take some time for capturing the memory and all of that. Second thing you have to worry about, are tracks ready for the player queue? There could be one track, there could be a list of tracks. Of course, in our case, it's going to be a list of tracks. But are they ready or are they in the player queue? Because this is going to take some time. And then am I listening to player events? There are many player events. I'll walk you through with some of them and it will help you to read the API's documentation as well. But this is something important that you should really know about it. Since we are here, obviously, we are going to talk about uh, one of the amazing hash node. So go ahead. This entire series is sponsored by Hashnode. Uh, they keep on running the hackathons absolutely for free. They also encourage people to share their learning journey. There's a lot of interesting materials and articles on that. Make sure you also share your learning journey about React Native on here. And a big shout out of thanks to them for sponsoring the series. Now, coming back onto React Native Player, first and foremost, this is open source. That is a good thing. You can find them on npmjs as well. Uh, pretty easy installation. Installation is the easiest process of all <laughs> that we can see. Uh, so let's go into the intro. So notice here, they all list down all the features and then they show the example as well. Then in the basics, you can see the installation guide. Now, installation guide is pretty simple for this one. It simply says npm install save React Native Track Player. This is exactly what we'll be copying. Let's move back onto our project and we are going to go ahead and paste it. So this is pretty simple. 
shouldn't take much of the time. There we go. Told you, it's really simple. Now you can also go for unstable version like something which is edge or on the edge. It might break, it might not. So you can install that. I will be avoiding that. Now for the iOS setup, you require a few extra steps because iOS actually requires you to work a little bit more. So they actually mention this down pretty easily. This can be easily uh, added by adding a Swift file export project called dummy.swift and uh, saying yes to the prompt, it will generate a bridge header. So that's all you have to do and then go ahead and do pod install. This is a common thing if you are building for iOS. This is a common thing that we do a lot for bridging and creating Objective-C to Swift bridges. Uh, so you can go ahead and do that. Expo, you don't need to do much. And for React Native CLI that we are working on, also you don't need to do much. Uh, it works out of the box as well. Now next is getting started. This is where they actually mention that how you can actually start the player. And they mention it that you should do it at the start of the project, which is index. This is exactly where we'll be also doing it. I will be doing it in the next video. First, I'll just walk you through with the entire uh, process. So track player, you need to register playback services and just add this line. Uh, the important thing is notice that we are creating a service here. So obviously, I'll show you what the service, the music player service is, but this is required and this is the important part of it. I'll walk you through in the next video, but don't you worry. The whole idea is that we import a track player from the package that we have installed and then we set up the player. Now they are mentioning just the bare minimum basics, but there could there should be more that we should go for it. Because what if the player is not ready? We need to wrap it up in the try catch as well, because this might be a failure event. We should also wait for it. So obviously the async await needs to come into the picture. This is not an easy thing. Then they also mentioned the controlling the player, that how you can control the player. We will be going something like this, but there are some information that we need to provide to the track to actually play it. First of all, the location from which the data is coming up, the music is coming up, uh, what's the track index, like if you are passing an array, what is the index of the track and a little bit more information I like that. So this is the basics and then we'll be also working on this play pause. Now obviously you might have seen some of the apps which just have a button like there is an uh, audio file and in which just says play, pause, stop, something like that. We'll be going a little more than that so that you can see the real world aspect of it and can build real world application for your that. And we have all these await, notice here, they are also mentioning await uh, for track player to skip, skip to next, previous, remove, we'll be working on all of that. What I recommend you to go and uh, learn a little bit is first this playback service. There is a lot of events that are happening here, add event listener, remote play, remote pause. So just go ahead and study a little bit. You won't be understanding it much, but it's a good idea to at least have the basics of it. Then jump into the API reference and you'll see that there are references for events. There are a lot of events that can happen on uh, the music or the video that you are playing. You might want to control some of them from uh, keyboards as well in case you're working on desktop, but here there's a lot. Uh, so you can go ahead and read about it. There are some hooks available as well, but I recommend you for the beginner to just uh, learn a little bit on the event. Even if you are not understanding it, just at least have a look at what are the options available to me. That's all you have to do. And we'll be working in the next video, step-by-step -step process that how these services are being set up so that you feel comfortable. I highly, highly recommend to watch at least this section, the project aid section, at least two times so that you get more comfortable, okay? Uh, this is a really, really interesting one. So go ahead and check this out. For experienced people, you know this, you have created many services like, uh, like this. So in the next video, we'll be going with the step-by-step -step thing. First, we are going to wrap everything in the index and I'll show you that how to create a service. Let's go ahead and move on to the next video.